Hey guys, it's Joyce, Medusa Readings. Um, we're going to do the next section here of Dr. Ballou's Human Tuning. Yesterday we finished up the Fibonacci and started into the overtones. I'm going to talk about the autos a little bit today. I think I'm just going to read this introductory part here, about five pages. And then when we actually get into the auto demonstrations, that'll be tomorrow. So, overtone tuning forks. Playing, singing, and listening to overtones has long been a method of healing and spiritual awakening. Buddhist chanters in Mongolia and Tibet sang overtones which were embedded with sacred mantras. While they chanted, these mantras would resonate overtone sounds in their sinus cavities and spaces beneath, between their cranium. So we're talking about like throat singing or the just the deep deep chanting like that. You feel it in your head. You feel it resonating. The result was both beautiful and powerful in its healing and spiritual effect. Many cultures have produced bowls that when tapped or rubbed produce different overtones. And I have bowls and they're all in the car so I can't play one for you but it, the sound wouldn't come through on the phone well anyway. The most well-known bowls that do this are the Tibetan singing bowls Himalayan singing bowls, all of my singing bowls were made in Nepal, by the way, in Kathmandu. These bowls come in different sizes and are made of seven different metals. When the bowls are played, they produce overtones that vibrate with different metals. The effect of overtones resonating with different metals causes a pulsation between heaven and earth. Those bells, those bowls essentially are bells. Um, there's two kinds. There's... Um, ones that are basically brass, so copper and zinc. And they're heated, the metal is heated, and then they're poured into a cast. Those resonate, but they don't, um, they don't have a therapeutic effect. They don't drone. They resonate, but they don't drone. It's the bowls that are made out of seven metals, the same metals that make a bell, so that bells ring and ring and ring and you feel a bell. Those are the seven metal bells and the seven metal bowls. And they're more expensive because there's a combination of seven metals in them, but also because they're entirely made by hand and they're hand hammered. And uh, like a bowl this big, it takes four or five men an entire day to make a, a bowl that big because they put the metal slag in the heat and then they hammer it and then they put it back in. It's like making horseshoes, you know, they're hammering it into shape. One of the most interesting overtone instruments used by shamans are pre-Columbian double chambered whistling vessels known simply as Peruvian whistling vessels. These vessels were discovered in graves throughout Peru and northern Mexico. They are still used by shamans to induce altered states and consciousness. Each whistling vessel has a different high-pitched tuning. Oh, sorry. When seven Peru Peruvian whistling vessels are continuously sounded, they create thousands of overtones. And here's a photo of those little things. If you've um, been to... Uh, Native American festivals or probably any kind of new age thing. You've probably seen these around. When the listener is immersed in the overtones, a cascade of structural and physiological events occur in the body. When investigating the high-pitched overtone sounds of Peruvian whistling vessels, physiologists at the Franklin Institute in Germany reported definitive bodily changes in the heart rate, blood pressure, respiration, and basal metabolism. It's also believed that the small intravalic gaps between the overtones cause a change in the distance between neural synaptic junctions. 
This change results in a release of endorphins, beta cannabinoids, and DMT molecules in that synaptic gap. The Russian composer Alexander Skarabin in the early 1900s believed that sounding overtones would bring forth a new era and unite heaven and earth. His last composition, Mysterium, was to be played in India using etheric bells hung from clouds that sounded very high-pitched overtones like wind chimes. Scarabin visualized himself sitting on earth listening to the overtone voices of devas, or spirit angels, that would bring forth a new era of enlightenment. Musically, overtones are a series of tones starting from a fundamental tone and ascending infinitely in pitch. The overtone series ascends in whole numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. With a 1.1 being the fundamental or first tone. The relationship, oh my God, I'm so yawning, I'm sorry. The relationship between the numbers of the overtone series form the basis of the Pythagorean musical intervals and an infinite number of other intervals. For example, the next interval after the fundamental is 1-2, an octave. The next interval is 2-3, a fifth, which is followed by 3-4, which is the interval of a fourth. And that's the uh, Fibonacci that we worked with yesterday. The solar harmonic spectrum, which was the first series of forks we worked with, auto toners, autos have these weights on top, and angel tuners, very small forks with very high frequencies in the 4,000, oh my god, I'm so sorry, are all tuned to a fundamental frequency of 8 cycles per second. The primary reason for eight cycles per second is based on the Schumann resonance. In 1957, W. O. Schumann calculated the Earth ionosphere cavity resonance frequencies, which are named for him as the Schumann resonance. The Schumann resonance consists of naturally occurring electromagnetic symbols which circulate and pulsate between the Earth and the ionosphere at approximately 7.7 to 7.8 cycles per second. The Schumann resonance is thought to be the heartbeat of planet Earth and fundamental to all healing processes. The eight CPS fundamental cycles per second also gives rise to some interesting speculation. When the Schumann resonance was first discovered, it was 7.5 Hertz and has been gradually rising. Many speculate this increasing pulse is signaling a shift in the consciousness. The 8 CPS fundamental is designed to entrain the Schumann resonance as well as support our transformation into higher states of consciousness. Another reason why this 8 was chosen was because in ancient art of numerology, the number 8 symbolizes the integration of heaven, the top circle of the 8, and earth, the bottom circle of the eight. The point that the circles cross is in the center and represents a still point between heaven and earth. The numbers eight turned on its side is the infinity sign, or a place of perfect balance between polarities. The following table begins with an eight CPS fundamental cycles per second, which is doubled nine octaves to four O nine six, which is the angel tuner. That's the frequency of quartz. So it starts at eight, which is the Schumann, and it goes all the way up to four o nine six, the frequency of quartz. The image of Jacob's ladder is often associated with the overtone series and ascension of overtones. Jacob's ladder begins on earth and rises to heaven. Earth is a metaphor for the fundamental tone and each step of the ladder represents a different overtone ascending to heaven. The ancient scholars of the Kabbalah believed that angels lived in the spaces 
known as intervals between the ascending overtones. These interval spaces between overtones were known by the ancient Taoists as mysterious mountain passageways that led to angelic kingdoms. When the overtone tuning forks are sounded, they create a very high pitch, much like the sound of dolphins or whales. The interaction between the different overtone tuning forks creates pulsations, which sonically massage the listener by creating an ever-changing environment of sound waves. The pulsating quality of the upper overtones resonates with bone structures in the cranium, like the sounding board of a piano. This resonance unwinds cranial sutures and allows increased cranial bone movement, creating a deep internal resonance in the intradural cranial membranes. So what it's saying is these high frequency um, oh where is my, well, I don't know what I did with my hockey puck, so I'll use this. That doesn't sound very good. It's not the same. So that's 4096, that's the uh, frequency of crystal. Now it's very effective if you play this, I wish I knew where I did it, with my hockey puck. If you play this um, right by your ear, you really feel it in your head. You really feel those cranial bones shift. The resonance unwinds cranial sutures and allows increased cranial bone movement, creating a deep internal resonance in the intradural cranial membranes. So the space between the uh, parts of your brain are referred to as the intradural spaces. When we listen to the overtones, a cascade of structural and physiological events occur in our body. The sound waves spread through our brain, causing millions of neurosynaptic junctions to seek out resonance in the different intervallic overtone relationships. When we listen to the overtones, it's common for us to experience an increased inner heat. This happens between, because of increased cranial movement, which directly affects our centers for metabolism and increases our blood flow. In mystical terms, the inner heat is called the fire of transformation, which is known as Tumo, the fire of Shiva, or the alchemical furnace. It is believed that this inner heat has the ability to burn away our karma and transmute our physical form into pure spirit. The Himalayan saints sit in high cold mountains in India, dressed only in loincloths. The Tumo heat from their bodies, caused by the burning of karma, uploads the dharma of the universe and melts the snow and ice around them into puddles of clear water. Each overtone and combination of overtones are bands of frequencies. These frequency bands are resonant with different areas of our minds, emotions, and bodies. We need access to all of our resonances on a vibrational level. If we debate a range of frequencies, this can show up in many ways in our daily lives. It may appear as a repeating behavioral pattern, a disease, depression, or a general lack of wellness. A radio station is a good effect of, a good example of the effects of frequencies. A radio station broadcasts lots of information over a frequency band. If that band is compromised, then the information is corrupted and static is all you'll hear. So I'm gonna go through these for you. So, um, oh, there's one more I have to grab. Okay, so the first one is the eight, which is the Schumann resonance. Now, I don't have an eight tuning fork, but I have several tuning forks that are octave multiples of that octave. 
This is 144. It is the 12th octave of the Schumann resonance. So that 7.85 times 12. So it's not eight, but it's an enhanced frequency nonetheless. And these are autos, meaning the weights push the vibration back down the handle and you use it this way. You activate it and then you put it on your skin. So the first two on the chart are both um, the eight and then the 16, the 16 just being the next frequency. We're just gonna, as you increase them, they just become more resonant in your body. So we'll carve at eight and 16. Okay, just for simplicity, because I don't have an 8 hertz or a 16 hertz tuning fork. Next, we've got the 32. This is the 32. This is my favorite tuning fork, I think, that I own. And uh, it's an auto, again, you see. And um, this is the frequency of lymph in your body and also of cerebral spinal fluid. So this is a fork that I use for assessment a lot. It's a fork, if you've got any kind of headache uh, or any kind of head or neck trauma, this fork is amazingly effective. Let me hit it harder so you can hear it. This one you can see it vibrating. So this is 32. So we're just going up from eight. And that moves your lymph. Next, 64. This one is really good for um, foot and uh, lower leg joints. Very effective there. 128. That's the C. This is one of the forks that if you are starting out, this is one of the forks, and you just want to start with one fork, this is the one you should buy. 128. You can do so much with this. Uh, 256, the lower C of the harmonic spectrum. We were working with this in the first and the second session. So that's middle C. And the next uh, frequency of eight is 512, which is the upper C of the harmonic spectrum. Again, we were working with this, the solar harmonic and the Fibonacci sections. Next we have 102.4 and 204.8. I don't have those, but then he tops it off at a 409.6, which is the crystal tuner, which a lot of people uh, use a crystal to strike it. Um, that's okay. Um, anything you use to strike it is effective. It's just that it's the frequency of quartz, so if you actually use it with a piece of quartz, it's very it has a very powerful effect. Okay, now I'm just going to read about this, and then we're going to stop here. So this is a short one today. So Angel Tuners. The Angel Tuner set, if you buy the Angel Tuner set, it comes with three forks. I actually gave one of my angel tuners to a regular client who's um, been having a lot of uh, clarity issues, uh, neurological, emotional kind of things, and so I, I gave her one of the forks. Uh, I, I used it with her and it was incredibly effective, so I just let her have it. That's kind of how I am. So the angel tuners consists of three overtone tuning forks, 4121, 
that's the one I gave away. 4096, which is the frequency of quartz, and 4200. When sounding the angel tuning overtone forks, the 4096 tuning fork is held in the right hand and the other two are held. So he's suggesting that you would do it like this if you had three and you would do that with them as I showed you. Um, but to do it as overtone, he's suggesting that you get them together and then put them on either side of your head and then change so you get that binaural effect. And it's very like, holy cow, if you have a hangover or anything, these forks are amazing. Uh, okay, crystal tuners. 4096. The crystal tuner tuning fork and the main is the main tuning fork in the set of three nine octave tone tuning forks called the angel tuners. The crystal tuner is tuned to the ninth octave of the overtone series and is said to open the pathway to the angelic kingdoms and to the eight CPS fundamental tone which is the heart tone of the planet Earth. When the crystal tuner is tapped on the back side of a quartz crystal, it sets the crystal into vibration. I don't have a crystal here. I used my, um, I can't think of what this is called, uh, organite. <laughs> you do feel it if you use it with a piece of crystal, you do feel it. The crystal tuner is a power sonic instrument for tuning chakras. That is true. The oscillating pulse between the crystal tuner and the quartz crystal. When the mind is focused on the color combinations which are used to activate the chakras for color healing, the colors are channeled through the point in the quartz crystal to the area to be healed. This is how it works. Let me get a quartz crystal to show you. like a battery so um hold the quartz crystal in in the hand of your choosing between the thumb and fingers point the quartz crystal at the chakra so let's use let's use this diagram here let's say we need to open his heart center so we're pointing the crystal right at his heart center Hold the crystal by its handle with the other hand. Gently tap one or more times on the rough end of the crystal, not the point. Focusing that at the chakra point. So then the crystal kind of becomes a laser. You don't really hear it but you can feel it. And then if you were actually doing that, I mean, I have forks that I would use in, in, in uh, relationship with that, um, that are aligned to the frequency of those chakras. You can also encourage the person you're working on to uh, Think about the color that is associated with that chakra section or um, ask them what colors they see when you strike the tuning forks and crystals. Uh, space cleaning. Feng Shui with tuning forks. Space clearing is clearing rooms of unwanted energy that can lead to clutter, poor thought processes, confusion, or feelings of being overwhelmed, all of which reduce available life energy. So... He's suggesting that you use the crystal tuners to clear space the way that you might incense or uh, sage. And they work. They work. 
Uh, space clearing with a crystal tuner can be done in any room of the house to balance energy. The crystal tuner can be used to clear healing rooms, meditation rooms, studios, or when traveling to clear hotel or motel rooms. Any space is suitable. Hold the quartz crystal in your left or right hand between the thumb and finger. Hold the crystal tuner in the opposite hand. Gently tap the rough end. Yeah, he's just saying do the same thing. And when you clean a room, you know, you, you kind of move it. You move it through the room. Stuff likes to get stuck in the corners, so I would be working up in the corners. Okay? That's all I'm going to go over today because we got lots of demos here with pictures. Dr. John and his wife. And that will be what we study tomorrow. So... Dr. Bolu, who studied with Dr. Stone. All right. Let's, uh, let's wrap this up with uh, 64. Bye, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.